I love sport. Whenever I play sport, people look at me like, oh my god, look at that guy. He's got one leg. He can jump that high. He'd be in the top 15 in the world in the high jump for his disability. And there's nobody in New Zealand that jumps as high as Jono. He could go to the highest level of the Paralympics. You just know where athletes have got that little X factor in them that could make them an international athlete. Jono Brownjong could be a world-beating Paralympian, but he's at a crossroads. At 18, he's asking himself whether he can afford to go on to student life and pursue the sport he loves. At night, I could not go to sleep to like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., just thinking about what am I going to do next year. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, very good. Yourself? Yeah, pretty good. Oh, yeah, we're playing, yeah. Yeah? My first sport in New Zealand was basketball, so I was always at the end of the bench, the coach not wanting to put me on. But then I showed how committed I was, and it turns out I was better than the guy that was starting over me. When I'm competing with able-bodied, I feel like I have to be at their level, not on mine. So instead of me being not so good, I have to up my game and be at their level. He's used a prosthetic leg since he was a toddler, and he works it to the limit. In the past, I've played soccer, I've played cricket, I've played rugby, I've played touch, I've played volleyball, I've done boxing, um, I've done cross country. Um, what else have I done? But now, <clears throat> I'm just on athletics. Become like a taxi. <laughs> Beginning of the week, he has Monday, he plays basketball for social, and then he plays wheelchair basketball Wednesday, and then Thursday he plays the social again, and then Saturday he has to go Inglewood for training, and then Sunday goes to his high jump madness, I think. <laughs> he's mad about it, he's passionate about it, he's, um, yeah, he lives with the sports. Mom. Yes. Can you hear? Come and do this and I'll lie in your shirt. I do not know how to do it. Jocelyn met Jono's Kiwi dad in the Philippines. She brought her two children here seven years ago for their schooling. Go and get dressed. When the doctor came when he was born, they said, oh, he won't leave for f an hour, if lucky. Two hours. That was okay. I said, why he won't leave? Because he had a smaller jaw and he wasn't able to drink milk or anything like that. He had one leg and I started crying because I was quite shocked at why, what happened? But then he was a happy boy and he was always hungry. So he was growing and growing and growing and becoming stronger. Happy, likes outdoor, of course, and lots of friends. When I tell him not to climb the tree, they say, why, mom? And I said, because you can't, you might fall off the tree. Oh, okay, that's all right. But then when I turn around, next time I'll see him, he's tried climbing up the tree already. So, yeah, he's determined he won. When he wants something, he'll just go for it, and it doesn't matter what it is. Jono's school days are almost over. 
He's made prefect this year at New Plymouth Boys High. I was thinking about the first day. I was there, all frightened and scared. But then my sporting career all started from there. Athletics started in high school, New Plymouth Boys High School. So yeah, it's cherished it. Mm. You can see, look, looking at all the different uh, things and so forth that are around in terms of our famous men, and you are going to be part of this, OK? You <laughs> will be part of the history of this school. Our greatest teams are in the 1950s, where the team never lost, the first 15 never lost. And these are some of the head boys all the way along there as well. Uh, this yeah, we're, we're incredibly proud of John O. The, the achievements that he's made, not only on the sporting field, but also in terms of his leadership around the school, has just been outstanding. Uh, we appointed him as a prefect this year, and John O's been an outstanding prefect. And one of the great highlights was when we acknowledged him in front of the whole school, and the whole school gave John O a standing ovation. You can achieve anything in life, and, then, and don't, don't take any uh, barriers in terms of that. Really work hard. That's what we're about. He loves this high school, but his primary years were not happy ones. People were just pushing me around, just look at me, make funny noises, make funny faces, call me names, only because I had one leg. I know I felt different because people kept giving me looks, so I had to do something to make them come around me. Sport was my getaway, because Whenever I moved here, I just wanted to fit in. Because all uh, everyone played sport, everybody held a ball, everybody ran around, and I just wanted to be at the same level they were. So I just started joining in with them, just so I can be at their level. In 2014, Jono won the title Taranaki Secondary School's CrossFit Champion against all comers. Well, to be honest, I just sort of think negatively about myself. So just reminding myself about all the negativity that's been in my life and sort of bringing that out and putting it into the gym. What to do next is Jono's biggest challenge. It's a crossroad for all New Zealand athletes as they leave school. They've had the, the protection and the support of a school environment and, and now they're pretty much on their own and we lose a lot of athletes in all sports and uh, that would be a real shame if, if Jono was lost to the system. He's got the talent but he needs good support and in a pathway that is unexplored really. We, he doesn't really have mentors to follow in the Paralympic um, mode. There are plenty of opportunities in front of him if he chooses. Sport Taranaki has put him forward for a place in the National Paralympian Development Squad. He'd have to move to Dunedin. But Jono is worried about the money. Hello again. Yeah. <laughs> good, Jono. Hi. How's things, mate? Yeah, good. Good? Yeah. Welcome. Tell yeah. me what's been happening. Ah, just here and there, you know. <laughs> no, it's still 50-50. Still waiting on the scholarship forms. I just don't want to end up with a big student loan. So, like any good athlete, you need to have a plan B in case you've got to come second. So what are you going to look at doing if you're not accepted? Getting a job and And staying where? Yes, you promise. OK. If Jono could get a Prime Minister's scholarship, it would cover his tuition fees and solve a lot of problems. This is just my thoughts. Would there be an advantage for you to be based in Dunedin around the high performance centre yep. where you're getting all that top quality coaching, one-on-one, -on -one, all that stuff with nutrition, um, so sports psychology, that if you, you, you just live down there, yep. um, but you were, you were hooked into the high performance centre. When I went off to uni, half, half the opportunity there was to get away from home too uh, and to experience new things, make new friends, uh, see a bit more of the country. Um, so, personal call, but I think if you're looking at your sports career, Dunedin's definitely a really, really good option. Yeah. I can't really tell what's going to happen, but we're going to push him to the limit that he would have a good future. 
ahead of him and achieve what his goal is. But Jono remains unconvinced. All the professional advice is against it, but he thinks a gap year might be the best answer. Most likely stay in your premise, get a job, earn some money, go the following year. There was an option about going to Otago, oh, going to Dunedin, um, maybe getting accommodation, uh, get a job there and then some money. <laughs> it would mean leaving girlfriend Kira behind. <laughs> He's really cute. I don't know, like, he does really nice stuff. I like hanging out with him. We hang out, like, every second day almost. <laughs> <laughs> if he gets a scholarship, he'll be going to Otago. So he'll be in, what is it, applied science? Sports science? Is that right? Got it. Right now, I do not know what I'm doing. How does that feel? Pretty shocking since it's just around the corner. So, yeah, got a lot to think about. Jono will have to make a decision pretty soon. His mother is giving up the Taranaki house and moving to Papua New Guinea, where Jono's stepfather lives. With me next year, I've done my bit for them. They Now they're grown, grown up. Jay has their own life. Jonathan is 18, and they said that it's time for me to be with their dad and moving back to PNG to be with him because it's been seven years that we, he's there and I'm up here because of them. It's going to be nerve-wracking. I'm going to be pushed into the deep end to be an adult, but I guess we all need that push to be grown up. Well, he has to decide whether he wants to go to Otago or not, for sure. He's really independent. He's one of the most independent people I know. You can't even joke on So he sorts everything out by himself, and he doesn't need us to push him. Oh. Okay, son. Uh. Take care. Are you good? Uh. Once a week, Jono travels 45 minutes to Hawera, where he has the attention of a top coach and a tough taskmaster. <laughs> I love Ed to bits because when I'm not doing the right thing, he gets on my back. Change your leg, Jono. <laughs> Jono's an achiever. He just goes out and competes, and it doesn't matter who's there. He's competing against himself and who's ever on the court or is on the track. Now he has a blade, he could be even better. Rotary and Sport Taranaki fundraise to get yep. this for him. Now I have a blade, I have to try to get used to using my left leg a lot more because I never used to use my left leg. I used to just plant it there and let my right leg do all the work. So now with my blade, both legs have to be working. <laughs> Active feet, please. Grab with the skips. I've been using it for a month now, and I'm still getting used to it. It's bouncier. That's it. It's still easy, get on seven. Before Jono got a blade, he was jumping on a walking leg, which means there was no, no spring to it whatsoever. So that's when I really had a lot of admiration for what this kid was doing, because he, was, he wasn't getting anything, anything out of it. So now with the blade, it's a whole different situation. So he's got this, just this little bit of a blade that he has to learn to coordinate and when and where to push off of it. You have to plant that foot like this, okay? And we can't be going down to come up, we have to hear and react off the ground. That's what we're working on today. It's there. That is the best jump you've had at 70 all this year. Two up. 
I'm trying to get him to do some more classical high jump technique, such as leaning away from the bar and creating a lot of space between his shoulders and the bar, because you have to put your foot down, and while it's your foot's bending and straightening, your upper body keeps coming. So he has to be able to stay away from the bar so that when he does leave the ground, he goes straight up in the air. Okay, you're starting to get into a little of that concentric stuff that we don't like. Trust yourself that you are strong enough to react off the ground and clear that. You don't have to bend your leg and push yourself over the bar. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> no fail. How hard was that? 170? Yeah, it wasn't hard. No. Jono's jumping 1.7 metres in practice. The New Zealand para record sits at 1.72, just two centimetres difference. Well, we've got our confidence back. Yeah. OK, two weeks we go 75. <laughs> it's gonna happen. It's coming out. It's there. His coach is also clear about what Jono should be doing next year. Okay, we're done here. We're going to go down there now. Just want to reiterate that you know that my feelings are get down to Polytech. Because as far as your athletics is concerned, that's a good place for you. Raylene is down there. You have a whole support network of people in the Paralympics down there, Paralympic community and they know that they can send me videos and we'll talk about your training and it'll all work out real smoothly. <laughs> Attack is probably the one that's going through my head at the moment, not the premise. Yeah, can you get me some Ed Fern, my coach, Bradley Bates from Paralympics New Zealand, Tony Bedford from Sports Saganaki have all put their input about me going to Otago. And they've got good information about all the scholarships, funding and stuff, so I'll probably pursue that in. Well, Jan, we got heaps of this trophy of yours and medals, so what should you do about them? Um, I don't want to take them. Just leave it. When, when, you go to Papua, when you go back, you just take it back with you. To Papua New Guinea? Well, not even what I'm going to do with them then. What am I going to do with them? That's yours. For Jano, we're hoping that he would go to Den Eden and he can continue his dream. Um, I've been here in Den Eden for about seven days. Uh, knowing that no one, just apart from five people. So, uh, yeah, good, good. See ya. Yeah. And at the moment, I've been meeting a lot of people. At the end, it's about your course, about my training, uh, about my future. jono has been awarded a Prime Minister's scholarship, and with a student living allowance, he's been able to make the leap to Dunedin. Boarding with a family keeps his expenses down. Hey, Shadow, how you going? Hey, good, yeah, good, good. Hey, you came back, so how was uh, your morning? Uh, I wasn't too bad. First day of the course was... Yeah, yeah, yeah how did you get along with the, you know, the bus? Oh, the bus was good. Um, they stopped by the packing shed and I had to walk. It was a 15 minute oh, walk. OK. Well, we'll uh, catch you later in the day. See, I've got training soon, so I'll be out. Good, good. Good, good to hear, yeah. Thanks, Jean. Good one. 
If I hadn't got a scholarship, I would probably still be in um, New Plymouth. I'm flatting first year, and at the moment, um, I don't have a job, so I have to pay for my rent, the power bill, and also food. So yeah, it's going to be pretty hard to find my budget and stuff. Close, close. We came to a development camp here in Dunedin last year and we put them through a battle, all of the athletes, through a battery of tests. And it wasn't just the physical attributes, because he did come out of that testing session very, very well. Good. It was just his whole attitude. He's just got a bit of a drive about him. Pole vault. Pole vault. <laughs> One metre 73 is Jono's personal best. That puts him first in New Zealand, gives him a New Zealand para record for his classification, which is a um, T44. So yeah, which is pretty awesome. Nice. Run-up's good. Mastering the blade is a work in progress. I think there's so much room for improvement for him as an athlete. Uh, again, the blade has been a major. Basically, what you're doing is re-educating them. You know, so what they've learned since birth, they've learned to do things in a way that has enabled them to do it, as opposed to perhaps this biomechanical model. So sometimes it is actually completely retraining the body and the brain. I'm real inconsistent. I've been inconsistent for about four or five months. Uh, I keep chopping my steps, extending it, so I'm all over the place with my run-up and my sprints. So I'm giving me a hard time, but it'll come. So how'd that go, guys? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. It felt all right. Just my first jump hit my knee, but it was all very So knee just from your socket? that was sore when you no, took off? Sure. Or the other one? Oh, the other yeah. one, okay. Uh, your knees will start aching, it starts rubbing against your bone. And I've got a lot of bruising around the knee. Cooking-wise, I'm all right at cooking. Money's going to be a big new thing for me. I'm going to have to live on a budget. It's pretty, pretty cheap. -y. This is my girlfriend. I mean, my family. Not really homesick, just people sick, I guess. Jono has to be at training at 7.30 a.m. And that means walking 30 minutes to the gym. There's a lot of party people here, eh? Uh, the party-wise, it's, it's, it's a huge difference because everyone's out drinking all night. It's not my scene. My scene is just with athletes. I want to get myself involved with people who have the same goal as me. Straight up, nice and tall. That's it. Nice and tall. So it's just coming straight up here. You're trying to be tall up here and as strong in the core as you can. It's all about body balance and functional movement. We've done a lot of research last year, particularly on the para athletes and their body and their balance, and then the correlation between that and functional movement and strength. And we've found if we can actually balance their body up as much as we can, it actually gives them better ability to be able to undertake their technique. Miss Holly's just going to show you exactly how it's done. Can you just walk over these, please? Can you just walk over these? Good, thank you. Good. 
Right, so I'm going to go single leg first. That's up. And just keep the momentum going. That's up. No, it's all right. It's OK. Just, just, just feel the movement. So just sort of try and feel yourself bounce along with it, OK? Because this is your prosthetic leg on the left, it will be harder to do than when you go the other way. All right? So we'll just try it first and just see how you go. It's OK. Good. Good. Who said he couldn't do it? <laughs> it's good. We can adjust everything else, get him fitter, stronger, faster, and, you know, actually start to learn to feel his body as nice. well. Who knows? Nice. Nice. Jono is embarking on a two-year diploma in sports management and leadership. It's time today. <laughs> yeah. Okay, can I get that PT student has to come down this end here, please? What's going to happen now, team, is we're going to split you into two groups. So, Ada Kays, please jump into uh, reception at the gym now. Brennan will be down shortly. It's a course that's both practical and physical. This morning we went to an introduction into the course for the Department of Power Sport and Exercise Leadership. I told them about how I want to help people with disabilities to do what they can't do for personal training. So I helped them to achieve what they can't. Of so far, um, so far it's looking good. Uh, a lot of um, physical activity, which I like. Um, a lot of really new people, which I need to know. Jacob, James, Jordan, Jack, Charles, Jordan, Josh, 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 Josh Jesse. Hey, <laughs> Matt, you made about 10 feet. It takes a long time to become an international athlete, and it takes a lot of hard work. But the way he's tracking, certainly with his ability and his testing. I think he has the ability to be a podium finisher at, at our Paralympic Games. Moving to Dunedin, I've got para-athletes around me. I've got a lot of coaches here for input. On my side of bargaining, I have to work extremely hard. I have to work my butt off. The goal over the next six months will probably be just working on my day. Get more consistent, then hopefully the height will come, the length will come, and the time will come. 